I was a Mason before I was made a Mason, um, but I didn't know it at the time. There's so much that changes in your basic perceptions after you are made um, or raised. For example, I one of the best movies and most enjoyable movies I ever watched was The Man Who Would Be King with uh, Michael Caine and Sean Connery. Loved that show because I'd, I'd loved the book by Roger Kipling. And I watched the movie, Christopher Plummer was in it, and it was just wonderful. And shortly after that, I became an entered apprentice and I went through the three degrees. And then about a year after I was raised, I saw the movie again. It was a different movie. Right. It was an entirely different show. Because I, at the first go around, I had entirely missed the symbolism and the connections. The second time I saw it, it was all there. Click, 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 click. The same thing applied once I started looking back on my life before I joined the craft. Um, the craft had given me everything that I'd been looking for. Um, all the things that I had inchoately formed opinions about and beliefs about were suddenly there when I, when I went into Blue Lodge, um, Craft Lodge. It was, you know, suddenly there within the tiled enclosure of the lodge, I saw all the pomp and the pageantry and the panoply of history unfolding and it all went back and it all made sense and it all resonated in here. And I learned new lessons on integrity and I learned new lessons on the importance of loyalty and commitment to one's beliefs. They were all new, but they were new degrees of perception. The raw material was all inside me and had been ever since I was a child, simply because of the way I was brought up. But until I, until I entered the craft, I had literally no idea that this was celebrated and committed to by such a huge segment of society. So that was a revelation on its own. And from the moment I went in as an entered apprentice, I was in a state of open-mouthed awe with every ritual, with every ceremony we went through, with every procedure in Lodge, because I'm privileged and lucky in that I had some brilliant teachers who taught me an undying love of our language, the English language and the way it's structured. So when I was a kid, my idea of having a great time in an afternoon would be to open a book and take a chapter or a paragraph from that book, a big paragraph, and parse every sentence in the paragraph just for the fun of it. So it's to see how all the various pieces of the language, all the bits, parts of speech fit together. And suddenly here I am in this environment, in Lodge, listening to this magnificent language being practiced. You never hear it outside of Lodge. But it was, it was thrilling. It was absolutely viscerally exciting to hear this. And of course it varied with the deliverer. You know, some, some members of the craft are just born orators and revel in it and they just bring it to life and make it bubble and it's fabulous. Other ones have obviously had a very hard time learning the ritual and they stumble and stammer and make mistakes and need to be prompted. It doesn't matter. They've still put the work in. They still have the obvious belief in the efficacy of what they're saying and what they're talking about. And it was just thrilling. So, and that's what, that's why you've got to get the word out there and get more young people in, more young men. Teach them, 
the magnificence of what goes on within the craft.